Greetings in the name of the Most High. Yeah, um, today we are uh, going to talk about the thyroid gland and how you can prevent yourself from losing your thyroid gland. Um, I know lots of people lost theirs already, you know, but um, if you know you have troubles in the thyroid, we will teach you how to prevent losing your thyroid gland. Very significant. It is the thermostat of the body. Like you have a vehicle. All vehicles have thermostat. And the purpose of the thermostat in your vehicle is to keep the engine cool. Yeah, water goes in and out. Well, your thyroid right on the neck, when you tie a tie, it's right here. It just have the same purpose. And it is very significant in women because it helps to normalize a woman's period, number one. And the thyroid is also heavier in women than in men. And when a woman becomes pregnant, it's even heavier. All right? Uh, so we're going to concentrate on the thyroid gland and how it functions in an alkaline terrain. And then we're going to show you some foods, the vegetables, the proteins, and the fruits, and what, which one is acidic, which one is alkaline, how you can mix them so you can stay healthy. Because, you know, you have some people who are, who are very ignorant, and they're coming on on different page and talk about, you know, people should eat anything because they're going to die anyway. That's, that's ignorant talk, man. That's ignorant talk. You just can't go eat anything. Eat some roaches then. Eat some crack roaches. Eat that. And, you know, we're going to die anyway. But I always teach people that the time you have to stay healthy is during infancy, when, you, when you're young, growing up. Because when you get older, is when all them things start happening that's negative. And that's why what you put into your temple is significant. Because it catches up with you long term. And that's why we have all these elderly in America on 15 drugs, 10 drugs, all thyroid troubles, heart problems, diabetes, you know, even Oklahoma. My nephew who's a cardiologist was amazed to tell me that so many people in, in Oklahoma, Indians, full of diabetes and losing their kidney to dietary bad habits. So your diet is important. So when a person come and talk about we people should eat anything because they're going to die anything, that's ignorance speaking, man. There's people talking ignorance. That's ignorance. You know what I mean? Let them get sick and get cancer and see if they're going to want to die. Why you run to the doctor when you have cancer if you don't, if you, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't scared of dying, you run to the doctor because you want to live. Even the Christ wanted to live too. So all this ignorant talk about you should eat anything, that's, that's, that's all that garbage talk. That's ignorance, man. Eat the good foods that will keep your organs well. And then when you get older, your organs will take care of you. You're going to die in your sleep instead of that walking with a cane and having all these different conditions that your doctor tell you can't fix. So today we're going to talk about the foods and the tire. I'm going to concentrate on the thyroid gland today. Because my sister, I'm a twin, she had thyroid cancer. And they give her iodine radiation, that's what they give everybody when you have thyroid cancer. Mm? Iodine radiation, that's what they give you. Yeah? And that didn't work. But now her diet has changed. She lose her thyroid though. So your thyroid don't have to be taken out once you know how to take care of it. Right? Now, there are different types of troubles in the thyroid. There is uh, Hashimoto disease. There is an overactive thyroid. There is an underactive thyroid. There is thyroid cancer. And lots of the time when you have, when you get thyroid cancer, the, 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 the cancer uh, uh, becomes so, that the tumor becomes so big, it starts touching your thorax. And that's when you can't speak and you're talking hoarse. So hoarseness is a sign that something is going on in the throat, in the thyroid, or in the thorax, or in the voice box, okay? See a doctor. Not Patrick Dell, not no herbalist. Go see a doctor first. All right? Now let's come over here. And we go to the proteins. We know that proteins are building foods, but they are also toxemia foods. All right? And that's why the seminar that we have in is very significant because when we have a seminar, we put everything on the screen so that you can learn about foods because this so called dietitian out there is giving you wrong information, okay? About this pyramid diet. Look at the proteins. Now, we have to look at the protein foods and look at which, which is acid and which is alkaline. 
And proteins are building food, but they are also toxemia food because of the length of time they take to come out of the body. All right? So let's look at the top of the, the top of the list over here. Avocado alkaline, coconut alkaline, olives, acidic. They're considered protein foods. Or they call them fruit proteins. Yeah? The seeds. Flaxseed, acid, pumpkin seeds, acidic, sesame seeds, acidic, and sunflower seeds, they all have they all are acid foods. And remember, we said that the body functions in an alkaline terrain. Let's go to the legumes now. The nuts. Almonds. I really we call them subacid, but they fall under the alkaline. Almonds are. And don't let anybody tell you that almonds have cyanide. That's not true. There is a test that, that test that be done on, on, on almonds. It's, it don't have cyanide. But when they put it, when they put when they make your almond milk for you, and they put your almond milk in your supermarket, they put all these detrimental things in your almond in your almond milk and cause your almond milk to have you to have troubles long term. Alright? So almonds. Are alkaline, brazen nuts are acidic, cashews are acids, macadamia are acid, pecans are acids, pistachios and walnuts are also acid foods. Look at them right here. Let's go to the legumes now. The legumes. Peas and beans. And the reason why peas and beans are very acidic because they have lots of starches and proteins which don't mix together and that's why they have a lot of gases because they have starches and proteins and they both are acid foods and that's the reason why when you're going to cook any kind of legumes you have to soak them overnight for 24 hours boil and, and throw the water out again and put some pumpkin in there to bind it or some fennel seed or aniseed to bind it so you don't get the gases but they're all acid foods soybeans if it's not organic soy, don't use it. Organic soy, because 80% of, the, of, the, of, the, of the, the soy is GMO. You have to look for misco, fermented soy, that is alkaline. Don't forget to use the word fermented. Tofu ain't no good either. You know what I mean? And black people shouldn't be even using tofu. But tofu is no good. But soy, if it's if it's fermented, have diastin and genistin, which do what? Which prevents your cancer cells from creating blood vessels. Let them do that because we search it was being done on these two compounds that is found in organic soil. And that's why Japanese women and Chinese women do not come down with breast cancer as the women in the West. All right? Because they use fermented soil. So the regular soil you want to have in the market ain't no good for you. The regular soy ain't no good. The GMO soy ain't no good. You have to look for fermented soy. Ferment, fermentation. Soy. And when you have, when you use soy as a woman, they make you feel that soy have estrogen, so your cancer is going to increase. That's false information also. You have to use lots of soy. And the soy, the, 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 the estrogen that's in the soy, the fermented soy, is phyto, P-H-Y-T-O. Phyto means plant source. So if it's a plant estrogen, common sense will tell a woman that your liver, which manufactures and breaks down huh, estrone into the least effective estrogen called estriol, removes it. If it's phytoestrogen. But it makes you feel that when you have breast cancer, you can't use salt. But they don't tell you that the same Dr. Mitchell Gaynor, who they, who they said committed suicide, an oncologist, all the research was done on the two chemicals that found in soil. In studies, proving that the genistin, the diastin in the soil prevents angiogenesis. But they don't want you to know that because they don't want you to fix cancer. All right? So let's go down to over here now. Miscellaneous, eggs, acidic. Cheese and all other dairy products is acidic. 
fish acidic, poultry acidic, turkey acidic, beef acidic. So all the flesh foods are acidic foods. Follow me? So if your body functions in an alkaline system, and you're eating all the acid foods, your thyroid gland can never function well because it functions better in an alkaline terrain. We're going to get to that. Let's go to the fruits now. Fruits. You have fruits that are sub-acids, and you have the sweet fruits, and you have the acid fruits. Let's look at the sweet fruits. Bananas, alkaline. Carib, acid. Dates, alkaline. Plantain, alkaline. Let's look at the dried fruits now. Or the sweet one we call it. Apple, it has some acid, but it falls under the alkaline terrain. Apricot alkaline. And apricot seeds, they get it from the seeds. You get, you get, B, you get B17 from that. That helps to fight cancer cells too. Figs alkaline. Peaches alkaline. Pears alkaline. Pineapple is alkaline. Although they have it as an acid fruit, but it becomes alkaline internally. Pineapple does. And they have a lot of bromelain for inflammation. All right? And... The prunes are acidic. The prunes. See there? Prunes are acidic. Let's go to some acid fruits now. Apple alkaline. First. Apricot alkaline. Fresh figs alkaline. Cherries. They say it's acidic. But cherries is alkaline. Cherries are alkaline, grapes are alkaline, guava alkaline, mango alkaline. But mango is a, is a sweet fruit though. You understand? Papaya alkaline, peach, pear, and plum are all alkaline foods. Let's go to the acid fruits now. Cranberries are acid. Gooseberries are alkaline. Grapefruit is alkaline. Lemons are alkaline. Lime alkaline. Orange is alkaline. But they have you feeling that they're acidic. They are acidic. There are acid fruits. But the, 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 the beautiful thing about these fruits is, is the length of time they take to move in and out. So the longer the food stays, is the more acidic the food becomes. Is a simple philosophy. Tomatoes. Tomatoes are also alkaline if you lightly steam it to release the lycopene in the tomato. Never eat tomatoes raw. Always lightly steam them. Alright? Now starches, we forget the starch paper. But starches as rice. Starting the rice and and pastas, they all they all acid foods, all starches, pasta, rice, macaroni, pea, uh, 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 potatoes, they all they all acid foods. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now like let's go to the vegetables now. Let's go to the vegetables. To the vegetables. We go to the non-starchy vegetables. Alfalfa sprouts, alkaline. Artichoke leaf, alkaline. How long alfalfa takes to come out of the body? One and a, one, 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 one and one hour and a, and a quarter to come out of your body. If you juice it, it takes 15 minutes to come out of the system, to be moved. If you juice it. That's when you're eating the, 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 uh, the artichoke leaves. Asparagus alkaline. Broccoli is, is, is what they call a, a, a starch food. But it is a starchy vegetable. So it is alkaline. Because it don't take long in your body to come out. That's the key. And they say broccoli is a hybrid food. Well, I know they say well, broccoli comes from kale. Now tell, tell, tell that to some of the farmers who know about planting foods. Alright? Cauliflower alkaline. Corn alkaline. Green, 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 pea, green beans. Fresh is alkaline. Green peas. 
mug beans, mushrooms. Do not use them unless it's Gandadharma, Shaitaki, Maitaki, Colosseps. Do not use the dancing mushrooms. They're poisonous. Radish, Ruhab is acidic. String beans is alkaline. And tulips are alkaline. That's it here. And this is the length of time they take to come into the body over here. That's how long they take to digest if you're eating them. But when you juice them, it moves quicker and causes the body to be, more, to, to be more alkaline. Significant. Now, let's go to the thyroid gland now. Look at over here. I want you to look at the heart. I want you to look at the, the stomach. I want you to look at the pancreas. And I want you to look at the thyroid gland. Now, the thyroid glands, if you could read it there, your thyroid gland is a vascular organ. It's part of the endocrine system. It produces and secretes enzymes, uh, 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 hormones, and it is heavier. It is, your thyroid gland weighs about 30 grams. And as I said before, it is... It is heavier in women than in men. And it, it enlarges when a woman becomes pregnant. This gland gets bigger when the woman becomes pregnant. And it is, it is also heavier in women too. Right. Now the thyroid gland produces what? It produces... Iodine, or thyroxine, sorry, and it produces another hormone called calcitonin. These are the two hormones that this gland produces, thyroxine and calcitonin. These are the two hormones this gland produces. But this gland depends on the gland in your brain called the pituitary gland, in order for this gland to function well. And the pituitary gland in your brain, from the posterior part of the gland in the brain, feeds this gland TSH, they call it thyroid stimulating hormone. But this gland depends on the parathyroid also in order for this gland to function well. So if the parathyroid do not metabolize calcium and the B complex properly, this gland will become overactive. And you will have what we call an overactive thyroid gland, meaning that when you eat, you burn up things fast, so you start losing weight, number one. You start getting palpitation of the heart, number two, because it affects the adrenal glands on top of your kidney, and it also causes you to have bulgy eyes. This gland could cause all this havoc in your body because it is not being fed the things from nature, and you don't have it functioning in an alkaline system. So let's see what it says. Because your thyroid gland is so dependent on appropriate pH balance, iodine, because you need iodine to make your thyroxine, a narrative element on which it depends assists in eliminating excessive acid waste from the body. And your thyroid gland, if, it's, if the body is is the alkaline, your system will work better and your thyroid gland will help with your brain function. Let them do that. But let them talk to a doctor like Dr. Sebastian Peters who we're going to have soon work talking about the endocrine system. Let them tell him that what I'm saying is wrong because he's trained in the endocrine system. And he was amazed that a little man like me, a little Rastaman, knows everything about the endocrine glands. 
and some doctors don't even know how it functions. You understand? God is great because God gives wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Now this gland, if it's on the active, the thyroid gland that is, it's telling you that you are lacking in iodine. Because you need iodine to make thyroxine. And if you don't have iodine, you can never ever make thyroxine and your thyroid gland will become underactive. So if you're overactive, it's because your parathyroid is not metabolizing your calcium and your B-complex well. So you will get either kidney stones, you all have troubles. Or you get an overactive thyroid. So you're going to eat lots of food, but your thyroid, which is the thermostat, that will burn up, metabolize so fast, you're going to start to lose weight. And your eyes are going to become bulgy, and your heart will palpitate. But Jehovah, he put so much herbs on this earth for us to use for the thyroid gland. Let me tell you what they are. If the thyroid is overactive, meaning that you are producing too much thyroxine. So you have to use herbs that act as what we call in herbal medicine, thyroxine inhibitors. God is great. The first one is called lemon balm. L-E-M-O-N-B-A-L-M. -L -L lemon balm. If you're overactive. If you are overactive, there's another herb you have to use called mother's word. It is an aminogog, but it also acts as a thyroxine inhibitor. If you are overactive and you're losing weight and your eyes is bulging and your heart is palpitating, you have to use another herb called bogleweed. Although bogleweed, B-U-R-G-L-E-W-W-D, -E -W -W is a thyroxine inhibitor herb, it prevents the thyroid gland from producing too much thyroxine but it also calms the heart if you, haven't, if, if you are getting palpitation from, in, from an overactive thyroid gland. If the gland is overactive and the heart is being affected, because once you have trouble in the thyroid gland, you're going to get high blood pressure long term. Let them do that too. Once the heart is palpitating, you can use both weed. But there is a wonderful plant called Horton leaves and flower and the berries. H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N, leaf, flower, and berries. And that will strengthen the contraction of the heart muscle and calm the heart if the heart is beating too fast. God is great. That if you are overactive, if you are overactive, you have to go to the cruciferous vegetables. Because the cruciferous vegetables act as what we call thyroxine inhibitors. They don't tell you that though. If you are overactive, you must go to the parathyroid glands, four glands around the thyroid gland, because they are not metabolizing your calcium and your B complex well. So you have to go and balance them by, by feeding them what? Calcium and the B complex. If you are overactive, because an overactive thyroid have less symptoms, but it's more difficult to repair than an underactive thyroid, which have more symptoms. That's if you're overactive. If you are overactive, the gland, this is, that is, the thyroid gland, you must go to your pituitary gland and balance the pituitary gland. Because sometimes when you have trouble in the thyroid gland, sometimes it don't start in your thyroid gland. It starts in another gland that affects the thyroid gland. They don't tell you that either. So the original cause of you having troubles in your thyroid don't have to come from the thyroid. It could be, it could be coming from the pituitary gland. It could be coming from the parathyroid. It could be coming from the adrenals that will affect your thyroid gland. So you have to work on the whole endocrine system. You have to work on the whole endocrine system, all the glands. 
and we give you a product called TG100. TG100 means thyroid gland, and in that particular product, we're working on the pancreas, adrenals, the thyroid, the parathyroid, and the pituitary gland. That's how you fix an overactive thyroid gland. And when you have an overactive thyroid, and a woman, it's going to affect your period. Because this gland is significant in a woman's menstrual cycle. The thyroid gland, that is. We're going to talk about the others. We have a lot to learn, man. They don't want to teach you all nothing. They tell you all, get sick, come, take some thyroxine, and take out your thyroid gland because they don't know how to fix it. But lots of people who lost their thyroid gland did not have to lose it because the doctors do not know how to fix nothing. All they know and what they learn in medical school is to pull it out or give you some drugs to control it, but not to repair it. And that is very sad. Now let's go to the underactive thyroid gland now. Remember we said that this gland functions better in an alkaline system. So once you start acidifying your blood, you are going to slow up the function of your thyroid gland. And that's why when you get an older, you start to gain weight because your thyroid don't function well in an acid terrain. When you are underactive, you eat less, but you gain weight. And your T4 and your T3, they call it thyroxine, 3 thyroxine 4, is inadequate. So where do we go when you have an underactive thyroid? Listen, look where we go over here. Look where we go. We go to your liver. Once you have an underactive thyroid, we go to your liver because your liver have a lot to do with your T3 and your T4. So we must go to the liver. And once you are underactive, in the thyroid gland, we not only feed your liver, but we give you, look at over here, CMOS. Because CMOS have iodine. And you need iodine to make your thyroxine. And your calcitonin also. With what we call tyros tyrosine. So once you are on the active, you start to gain weight. You start to have constipation. You become infertile as a woman if you are on the active. You start to have laziness, can't get up in the morning. Because your liver is not dealing or balancing back your thyroxine 3 and thyroxine 4. So when you're on the active, you can't use no cruciferous vegetables. When you're on the active, you can't use lemon balm. When you're on the active, you can't use mother's word or heart and or, or burger weed. When you're on the active, we go to the sea vegetables because you need iodine to make it thyroxine. And we work on your liver. And once you're on the active, you are more prone to getting high blood pressure than when you are overactive. You get palpitation of the heart when you're overactive, but when you are on the active, you get high blood pressure because your thyroid gland over here have a lot to do with your heart. And that's the reason why when you're on the active, you get high blood pressure. And if you don't know where your pressure is coming from, you will never fix it because this gland causes you to have high blood pressure if it's underactive. But it depends on an alkaline system in order for it to function at peak. And it depends on the pituitary gland in your brain in order for that gland to function at peak. It depends on the stomach for nutrients in order for that gland to function at peak. And number two, it needs tyrosine. Don't forget the word now. This gland needs tyrosine. It's an amino acid. And tyrosine 
is significant in many ways. Here what Harrison works. When you have vitiligo, it's uh, like what Michael Jackson had. Vitiligo is telling you that the melanite cells, they call it melanites. I don't know, the doctor said he questioned that too. The melanite cells is so acidic that your melanite cells start to self destruct. And your immune system become overactive and cause the cells to become destructive. That's what causes you to have vitiligo. But the doctors who is not trained in nutrition do not tell you that once you have vitiligo, you need lots of vitamin C because vitamin C in abundance, buffered, not acidic vitamin C, buffered vitamin C in abundance, here what it does. It helps to prevent your melanite cells from self-destructing. Let them do the research, the research, the research. Two, if you don't have tyrosine with all the, all the other amino acids, because they function together, all the Bs function together, all the aminos function together. If you don't have enough tyrosine, tyrosine in your body, your melanite cells can never ever produce tyrosine, which is an enzyme that protects the melanite cells from being destructive to the, melanite, uh, 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 to the melanin. Never. But if you are eating the foods that are so acidic from infancy, you get older, and your thyroid don't function well, and you don't have enough tyrosine in the body. Vitiligo comes in, all the pigmentation starts to damage. But they don't know how to fix it. So they make you bleach. Bleaching even worse. Bleach kill the melanite cells. Kill your pigmentation. Stay black. Black is beautiful. Don't forget that. If the melanin cells do not have the enzyme called tyronase, these melanin cells will self-destruct. And tyronase, you need tyrosine in order for you to make tyronase. Just like the thyroid gland, right over here. If you don't have enough tyrosine in your system, and you don't have enough zinc, which is the mineral in your system, and you don't have enough iodine in your system flowing away boop, into the bloodstream. Because all these minerals help to alkaline the blood. But if, they're not, if they are not found flowing in the blood and feeding your thyroid gland, you are going to have some kind of troubles in your thyroid, you're going to get nodules there, you're going to get a goiter, swelling of the neck. And when you get the goiter, the first thing the doctor said to you, we got to take out your thyroid gland because we don't know how to fix it. Let me tell you now how you fix a goiter. If the goiter is too big, surgery might be your best choice. I don't fight on surgery. But surgery should be your last choice. After exhausting everything else that is found in nature. So when you have a goiter, because you can have an overactive thyroid gland and have a goiter. And you can have an underactive thyroid gland and still have a goiter too. So you have to know which one it is. And that's the reason why the medical system, I'm going to say it again, don't fight them down. They are very important because you can't tell me, as a herbalist, if a person TSH is, is inadequate or if a person T4, T3 is inadequate. The blood test will tell you that. So you must deal with the medical system. So you all could call me a commercial herbalist. That's what they call me in Grenada, a commercial herbalist because I did the doctors. 
You can call me a commercial herbalist. Let me stay a commercial herbalist because at the end of the day, my obligation is to help people. And if doctors can help, work with them. Bottom line, that's how I see it. All right. Now, when you have a goiter and the thyroid is overactive, we get four powders. Well, the first powder is called myrrh. That's what they give the Christ in Bethlehem. M-Y-R-R-H, myrrh. The second one we give them is frankincense. F-R-A-N-K-C-E-N-S-E. -E. The third one is called golden seal, powder. G-O-L-D-E-N-S-E-A-L. -E and the last one is called turmeric, powder. T-U-M-E-R-I-C. These four powders together. And once you put the four powders together, you get some zinc or some bentonite clay. And you mix the, the zinc powder with the bentonite clay and the turmeric, frankincense, myrrh, and golden seed. And you can either add a piece of apocry also. And you mix them with some oil. Olive oil. Or frankincense oil. Even better. And you rub it on the goiter. Twice per day. And a pace. And in three to four weeks, while you're walking on where? Over here. Your liver. You're going to see that goiter start to diminish. And once you're working on a goiter, you will have to work on your lymphatic system. Look at over here, right here. Wait a You have to work on your lymphatic system. It's not there. It's not there? You have to work right there. Once you have a goiter, you have to work on the lymphatic system because your lymphatic system controls all over here. Watch me now. Your lymphatic system controls all this. Your lymphatic system controls all over here. Ears, nose, throat, arm, pit, groin. So, once you have a goiter and it grows, you must work on your liver, you must work on your intestines, you must work on the earth, which is your stomach, to move things quick. And then you must use paste to put on the goiter and eat the right foods and work on your liver and your lymphatic system and drain it. And then you will see that goiter will disappear. Bottom line, these are just natural things we are trying to teach people every day. But we eat so bad. So that when we eat bad, and after a while, a woman who is lacking in all these trace elements from these foods over here, she starts to get trouble in her, in her thyroid gland. She starts having trouble with her period. And she starts to get overactive on active thyroid gland. Starts to gain weight. And she's going to her gym, and she's working out every day. And she's, trying, she's not losing the weight. And she's trying to figure out, why am I not losing weight? You are not losing the weight because you are, you are putting your thyroid gland to work in an acid system that slows up the function of the gland. And you don't use your sea vegetables, your sea moss. You don't use your suma. You don't use duds. You don't use bladder rack. They all come from the sea. And they're full of trace elements. They're full of iodine. And you need iodine to make thyroxine. So if you don't have iodine, you're lacking in your system. How are you going to make thyroxine? You must become underactive. So what they do? Come over here. They pull it out. They make a big zero over it. See, they chuck it out here. They, they clean it out. They surgery. And when they take it out, guess what they give you? They give you thyroxine because you need your thyroxine because the, 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 the thyroid that makes it. But now, when they pull it out, you don't make thyroxine anymore. So they have to give you a thyroxine pill forever and ever. Amen. Till you die. And then the thyroxine that they give you to take, which is not, which is not a natural one, affects your liver, this organ over here, in a negative way. It kills your liver long term. So your best choice is to try to take care of your thyroid gland. Don't lose it. Clean it up. Take your iodine. Take your herbs to fix it. They all work together. We're gonna have a we're gonna have another video on all of them, even your joints, and tell you how you get joint pain.
when your body is acidic. Do not eat starches and protein together. Do not eat a fruit after, after you had a meal. Do not eat desserts. Do not eat and drink at the same time. Do not eat standing up. Do not eat when you're rushing. Do not eat when you're angry at your man or your woman or your husband or your wife. Don't eat. And your tarot will take care of you. Blessed love. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know we are getting married. We are getting married on the maybe you're ready for the marriage. A lot of people thought she was married already to me, you know. As she said, Christy Dennis. So then man won't bother her. <laughs> but you know, we are getting married on the 26th of December. Me and my princess, my empress right there. That's week after Monday. And I hope you all could attend the wedding. <laughs> Push the love button now. Push the love button now, man. It's love. You know what I mean? We have two children and we are getting, we are going to, the, 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 to me, the black family is very significant. A lot of us black brothers, you know, we, we, are, we are not fathers to our children. And I was one of them, you know, made a lot of mistakes. But then again, slavery, slavery, slavery. They could say whatever they want, but slavery had a drastic impact on our brothers and sisters. And um, we were books. And I don't want to be a buck no more, so I want to make sure that I have my children around me and we can grow up as a family because all the other families are strong. We need to keep our family strong also because the family trucks and the family tree is very significant. Show them your face, baby girl. Yeah, that's true. She getting married. She getting married. Push the love button now. We're getting married on Monday the 26th of December. You understand? And we ain't dealing with no divorce because God hates a divorce. You know what I mean? Been through that already, so you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so push the love button. We love you all too. I love everybody. You know what I mean? And we're going to be live. We're going to show you all the pictures and stuff. We're going to be live and stuff, you know. But you know, you know what I mean? You're going to be there in the spirit. All my friends on Facebook, you know. A man tell me I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to a funeral. <laughs> when you say, say funeral. <laughs> this is not a funeral. This is blessed. This is love. And um, we've been together for a long time. And we want to show a lot of our brothers and sisters out here how to keep a family. We're going to have fights. We're going to have ups. We're going to have downs. We're going to always have fights in families. But when we have fights, we have to go to the most high because he is the one that instituted marriage in the beginning. So he's the best counselor. You understand? Telling us how to keep our wives and how the wives should keep to, to, to deal with the husband. Brothers, the Bible says, men, love your wives. I just love your own self. And a woman should have deep respect for her husband. That's the basic principles of the Most High. You know what I mean? And then we become one. So we know, we know two are giving me one baby, right? Mm. <laughs> All right. Blessed, love, any question they had to ask, and we're going we to move. All right. So you know how to take care of the tarot gland now? Please. Um, I'll be in New York on Thursday. I'm only in New York for three days. I'm leaving New York on Tuesday. I'm only coming to do some. Something for the wedding, you know? Mm, I guess. You're going to get some itineraries for, for the wedding and stuff. Make sure she's happy. You know what I mean? Make her happy and stuff. You know, I don't want to make her sad. You know what I mean? So don't make her cry either. Because we should cry, cry too. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I mean, I'll be in New York on Thursday. I have some patients to see on Friday. I'm booked up on Friday, but you can make an appointment to see me at, um, at Ambrosia either Saturday or Monday. Because I'm leaving on Tuesday if God give me health and strength. I don't like the cold. But because I'm coming up to, t to see about my wedding stuff, you know, <laughs> I'm going to be in New York for, two, for three days, yeah? So when you want to make the appointment, call Ambrosia, 718-469-0985, ask for Ashanti or Trisha, and you can make the appointment to see me for Friday, Saturday, or Monday. Because Tuesday, I'm back on the Iron Bird, back to the heat to greet my little princess. <laughs> I'm waiting for the big wedding, all right? Any help will be appreciated. Blessed love. Give thanks and praise to the most high Jehovah God because he's the one that instituted marriage. And he said, a man shall love his wife like he love himself. You know what I mean? And any kind of troubles you have, take it to him. The most high in prayer. Bless him. Bye. What questions? <laughs> All right. You want any questions? Yeah, one, two. Quick, 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 quick. Too many congratulations. Too many questions. Uh -huh. Too many congratulations. Oh, congratulations. All right. So maybe you can just... Um... All right, I, I want everybody to stay healthy. I know you're going to eat all your pork and your ham for the Christmas time. 
but I, after the Christmas, try to make, make 2017 a year of putting yourself in a mode that will keep you healthy. You know what I'm saying? Keep yourself in a mode in 2017. Don't you make... your number for them? Yeah, the num my number here or, or, or New York? The New York number is, Ambrosia number is 718-469-0985. You can ask for Trisha or Ashante and you can make the appointment for either Friday or I think Friday I'm booked up though. But still ask for Friday or Saturday or Monday because on Tuesday I'm leaving. Um, and then I'm coming back, I'm coming forward again to Grenada, you know what I mean? And I ain't going to be back again till maybe when it gets a little warmer with my whole family, you know what I'm saying? Um, okay, thanks for watching. And don't forget, my love, my love, my love goes out for all of you, even the haters, even the critics. Love your enemies. Pray for those who despitefully use you because they might sound funny, but when you do that and they're still hating you, they can never prosper. Because God is love. And he made, the, he made that rain fall on the righteous and the unrighteous. So that means you love everybody. See? All right? Blessed love. Where Push the love button. Where in New York I'll be in Brooklyn, 3306 Church Avenue on Friday morning from 10 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. 3306 Church Avenue in Brooklyn. And it's between New York Avenue and 34th Street. All right? Bless it. How old, how old is the child? If the child is over six years old, you can use our Healthy Kids compound. You can use lemon balm. You can use elderberry. You can use elderflower. You can use peppermint. These are herbs that are good for children. Red clover, um, horse tail. And you could kind of keep the child's um, skin and liver healthy in, the, in that aspect. If the child is under, under five, your child does <coughs> cleanse it on her own. <coughs> Unless the child is a junk eater, yeah? Yeah? All right? Bless the love, push the love button. Push that love button, man. Push that love button because I love you. I love you. And the love is from here. It's not from there. The love is from over here. That's the heart. So push the heart button. Right? Bless the love. And don't forget, we're going to have another live video on all the, gland, all the other organs and the glands and show you how they work in an alkaline system. And this is like a bi-life program. When we, do this, when we come to New York, we're going to have them printed in New York and Ambrosia. So you can come and pick them up if you like. It's going to be free. You understand? So all, once, you, once I'm in Brooklyn, we're going to print up all these things for you. All these, the big book of them. See them here? See, it's a big book of them. It's about 22 pages. I want to eat your food. I want to stay well. And it's, it's going to be free. So once I'm in Brooklyn and you want to get a buy life program, you come by and we're going to print it for you without a call because not everything is, is a cost, okay? All right? Buy the truth and sell it now. Blessed love. Give Jah the glory. Give Jehovah, or Yah, Allah, whatever you call him, the glory. Give him the glory. All right? Blessed love. Peace.